telling the truth. It's just a silly TV show. I don't believe you! Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best plot twists in Disney Channel original movies. Why don't you run, little one? Because I know the truth! For this list, we'll be looking at the most unexpected twists and reveals in Disney Channel's original films. Of course, beware of spoilers ahead. What's your favorite Disney Channel original? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. There's something dark about Max. Now you see it. Well, as we all know, magicians say the secret to any good trick is misdirection. That means they're trying to get you to focus over here while they do some hocus pocus over there. Before Wizards of Waverly Place, we all got our magic content from Now You See It. In this movie, Allison is searching for the world's best kid magician and she finds Danny, except his powers are real. He receives praise from Max, the show host and world-renowned magician, who reveals that his powers are also, you guessed it, real. The only problem is that Max doesn't want to help Danny so much as control his powers. I don't get it, Max. How am I going to do my final trick if this ring keeps my powers in check? Don't worry about it. We're in this together now, Danny. When Allison discovers that Max's old mentor, Antonio de Milo, died after a prop collapsed on him, she realizes Danny is in a worse spot than she thought. Max is controlling your powers with that ring. And I heard him say you can't take it off by yourself. Maybe this one's a little predictable, but a good guy going bad is always a classic twist. Number 9. Lyle Poisoned His Uncle. You lucky dog. There's a very good reason why my master, Mr. Windsor, cut those three out of his will. They're pinheads. This one's a bit of a darker twist, but as was most media aimed at kids before the 2000s. The film follows Jack, a dog therapist who can read the mind of his own dog, and also, apparently, Lucky's. When Lucky's owner, Clyde Windsor, passes away suddenly, his niece and two nephews, Margaret, Lyle, and Reuben, believe themselves to have inherited their uncle's estate. As it turns out, Windsor has left everything to his dog, Lucky. The twist comes in a court scene later on, when, through reading Lucky's mind, Jack discovers that Lyle is the one who likely killed his uncle. What can we say? It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. You poisoned the old man, didn't you? It was murder! You killed your uncle! <laughs> Number 8. Addison isn't really the great alpha. Zombies 2. I questioned myself. Addison, I'm sorry. I was afraid that if you turn into a wolf, I'd lose you. You don't get to make that choice for me. But a werewolf? I finally find where I belong and you try to steal that from me? She isn't actually a werewolf at all. In Zombies 2, the werewolves are in pursuit of the Moonstone in order to maintain their powers. The prophecy tells them a girl with white hair, the Great Alpha, will lead them to the Moonstone, and they believe it to be Addison. No one knows her identity, but she looks like you identically. They give her a necklace to help her transform if it turns out she really is a werewolf. By the time she gets to put it on, though, the Great Reveal falls flat. This is a pretty cool twist, and it leaves a lot of room to explore Addison's true identity in Zombies 3. She's not a werewolf. Number 7. Zachariah Cull was innocent. The Scream Team. I think 200 years of rage are about to be let loose. Here's a movie that makes us think a little harder about mob mentality. Zachariah Cull is presented as the villain from the start. Legend says that he burned his wife to death, and now, every year, the town throws a festival in his villainous honor. To make matters worse, Ian and Claire discover that Zachariah's ghost has been harboring souls, including their late grandfathers. However, as it's later revealed, Zachariah's story has been twisted. Who cares if he was innocent or not? He's dead and gone. Actually, he's kidnapped my grandfather's soul, so it really is kind of important. He wasn't evil so much as he was an inventor, and it was one of his creations that accidentally killed his wife. He was unjustly put to death for his crime, and his rage kept him from ever crossing over. Zachariah. 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 I love you. Rebecca. The truth eventually sets him free, but his backstory is devastatingly tragic. Number 6. Santos de Bear controls the darkness. Twitches. I'm so relieved. Whatever, loser. 
throughout Twitches, the darkness was a pretty prevalent threat. The darkness raged across the magical land of Coventry, overpowering the forces of light. We see it kill the twins' father in the very beginning after he transfers all his powers to them in order to keep them protected. 21 years later, and the darkness is still kicking. When the twins learn of their true origin and finally meet their mother in Coventry, they also find out that their mom has remarried, her late husband's brother Thantos. Just a bad situation all around, really. But then comes the reversal. Thantos was responsible for his brother's death, with what else to gain other than power and wealth? If you'd never laid eyes on the girls before, how did Apollo draw a picture of your face coming out of the darkness the night Aaron died? It's always power and wealth. Miranda discovers this much too late, but with the help of her daughters, Thantos is vanquished and Coventry is saved. Number 5. The Stevens Gotcha The Even Stevens Movie You're Okay, Ren, you know I'm afraid of heights and spears. When the Stevens are tricked onto a reality show, they're naturally at each other's throats. It seems to go much too far, with Ren really being pushed to the brink. She corners Lewis off a cliff's edge and pushes. I can't take it anymore! Ah! The show's host, Miles, who duped the family into thinking they were on a tropical vacation, is overcome with guilt. At this point, we were a little freaked out too. Seriously, it looks like Ren just flat out murdered her brother. But then the gotcha helicopter rises through the air with Lewis safe and sound. And as it turns out, the Stevens are really good coordinators. Miles McDermott! This is Lance LeBeau, and I just dropped in to say, gotcha on your own show! Yeah! <laughs> Number four, the mayor is the mastermind, Halloween Town. Hello there, I don't believe we've met. And that means I'm in trouble, because the mayor's supposed to know everybody. People are disappearing in Halloween Town. Aggie knows something sinister is going on and sets out to find out just what so she can stop it. Meanwhile, the kids follow their grandma Aggie back to Halloween Town. Soon after, mom comes to get them, only to run into the town's mayor, Calabar, who also happens to be her old ex-boyfriend. Aggie discovers citizens of Halloween Town frozen in an abandoned theater at the hand of a hooded demon. The demon turns out to be none other than Calabar, who's still bitter about his ended relationship with Gwen. Too long have we been exiled to this second class world, forced to live here in this Halloween town. As a kid, the Halloween Town movies always had the best twists. Remember when Splendora turned out to be Aggie and returned to Halloween Town? Splendora, we need to talk. Look, I just need a minute. Number 3. Ali is the real King Arthur. Avalon High. Stay away from him! This movie single handedly created an army of preteen medieval history buffs. King Arthur and his brother Mordred are prophesized to return according to Ali's medieval literature scholar parents. When Ali notices a pattern with a quarterback Will, she theorizes that he's the reincarnated Arthur and that his stepbrother Marco is the reincarnated Mordred. If Mordred kills Arthur, it'll send the world into another dark age. So, you know, the stakes are pretty high. When the day comes though, Marco is revealed to be protecting Will, and the real Mordred ends up being their teacher Mr. Moore. He attacks the group and Ali grabs a prop sword to defend herself, only it transforms into Excalibur. What, what's happening? Any sword in the hands of Arthur becomes Excalibur. Surprise, Ali's the reincarnation of King Arthur. It was you all along, Ali. You're King Arthur. Number 2. Dr. Olsen and Dr. Spaulding are twins. The Sweet Life Movie Did anyone else find this movie incredibly dark considering the lightheartedness of the Sweet Life shows? Well, if by love you mean a dark, bottomless pit of constant burning of a thousand white-hot suns, then yes. Cody decides to spend his spring break interning at a research firm for Dr. Donald Spaulding. Cusack messing things up for his twin, and just like that, Cody's kicked out of the program. While Cody's no longer a fit for Dr. Spaulding, the Martin twins are ideal candidates for the Gemini Project, run by Dr. Ronald Olson. After a bit of waffling, the two eventually sign up. The experiments produce some pretty gnarly effects between them, but that isn't all. We've got to free all those other twins. And most important, we have to avoid eating any more of that fruit. 
which you were eating now! Dr. Olson's evil intention of merging twins is divulged. And then there's one last twist. Dr. Olson rips off his mask Scooby-Doo style to reveal an identical face to Dr. Spaulding's. Wow, that is a pretty intense chemical peel. I had a feeling this guy was two-faced. Meet Ronald Spaulding, my evil twin brother who disappeared two years ago. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Eric is a Synthodrone. Kim Possible, so the drama. If you watched this the day it premiered, you may just have had nightmares that night. Although Kim is looking forward to prom, she's not looking forward to her lack of a date. Enter cool, cute, charming Eric. He and Kim quickly start dating, and despite him seeming like the perfect guy, things that seem too good to be true usually are. Wow. <gasps> Didn't know you cared that much. Eric, you're okay. Kim. It turns out, Eric is not only so not the perfect guy, he's not even a guy at all. Actually, here, I'm known as Synthodrone number 901. Meet Synthodrone number 901, created by none other than Dr. Draken. Luckily, Eric would be the thing that inevitably brought Kim and Ron together. So, you know, maybe this one wasn't all that bad. But that melting face? Oh no! no! <laughs> yeah, no. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.